So a homegrown messaging app has just absolutely exploded onto India's digital scene, pretty much rocketing to the top of the app stores overnight. It's called Aratai, and its sudden rise is making everyone ask a huge question. Is this just a flash in the pan, or are we watching the start of a real tech revolution? And when I say exploded, I mean it. Get this, in a single week, downloads for Arata jumped by a mind-boggling 185 times. Yeah, 185x. That's not just a successful launch. That is a full-blown viral phenomenon. And it tells you that something big is shifting in what people want from their apps. And all that buzz immediately brings us to the main event, the big question we're digging into today. Is this just a temporary trend, you know, fueled by a wave of national pride? Or is Aratai a genuine challenger that could actually go head-to-head -head with the global giant WhatsApp? All right, so to figure that out, here's our game plan. First, we're gonna unpack its whole Made in India promise. Then we'll check out its features, see what it can actually do. After that, we'll get into the debate around its name, get real about the huge challenges it's facing, and finally, we'll look at its really ambitious vision for the future. Okay, let's dive right into the core of its appeal. See, Aratathai's popularity isn't just about cool features. It's tapping directly into this powerful feeling for self-reliance and digital independence, a concept that's all about something called data sovereignty. So what on earth is data sovereignty? Well, it's actually a pretty simple but powerful idea. It just means that your data, your chats, your photos, are subject to the laws of the country where they're physically stored. And for a lot of Artai's new users, knowing their personal conversations are on servers in India under Indian law is a massive, massive deal. And this whole promise really stands on what you could call a triple foundation. First, it's Swadeshi Tech, 100% homegrown, built, and hosted in India. Second, they have a strong privacy covenant. They're promising absolutely no ads and no selling your data, ever. And third, it's got what you might call enterprise DNA, because it's built on Zoho's super stable corporate platform, which gives it a ton of reliability right from day one. But look, a promise is one thing, right? What you can actually do with the app is a whole other story. So let's get into it. What can Artai actually do? And how does it really stack up against the competition you're already using? This is where it gets really interesting. When you put them side by side, the differences are pretty stark. On monetization, Aratai is totally ad-free, unlike WhatsApp, which of course shares data with Meta. When it comes to where your data lives, it's the only one here that guarantees it's stored inside India. But, and this is a big one, let's talk encryption. Right now, its competitors offer end-to-end -end encryption for chats by default. For Aratai, that's still a coming soon. And Aratache is packing some pretty unique tools that go way beyond just chatting. It has a document scanner built right in. You can do in-app video meetings, kind of like a mini Zoom. There's a personal cloud storage space called Pocket, and you can use it on up to five devices. These are features that are really trying to make it more of a productivity hub, not just a messaging app. Now let's step away from the tech for a second, because one of the most talked about things with this app has actually been its name. Arate means chit-chat in Tamil, and this choice has kicked off a fascinating debate about regional identity versus, you know, national ambition. This criticism was captured perfectly by the entrepreneur Vivek Wadwa, who gave some very blunt feedback. And he wasn't alone. A lot of people online echoed this, basically saying the name was too regional, too hard for non-Tamil speakers to say, and that it might limit how far it could really go. But hold on a second. Does a local name really stop a tech company from being successful? Let's just look at the evidence. The Google of China is Baidu. The biggest messenger in Vietnam is Zalo. And South Korea is completely dominated by Kakaotalk. All of these are massive, massive success stories with very local names. Okay, but despite the crazy viral hype and this really compelling story, let's be real. Arate is facing a steep uphill battle. We need to talk about the massive challenges it absolutely has to overcome if it wants to survive, let alone actually thrive. There are three huge hurdles here. First, and this is the biggest beast in all of tech, is the network effect. I mean, a chat app is only useful if your friends are actually on it, right? Second is that encryption gap we talked about. It absolutely needs to deliver on full end-to-end -end encryption for chats to truly compete on privacy. And third is just stability. Handling that kind of massive growth without crashing or getting buggy is a monumental technical challenge. So keeping those big challenges in mind, what's the long-term play here? Well, it seems like Zoho isn't just trying to build another walled garden like WhatsApp. Their ambition looks like it's something much, much bigger. You can sort of see their roadmap right here. 
Right now, the focus is just managing this insane growth. Soon, they'll close that encryption gap. Looking further ahead, they plan to plug in key digital services like payments and a document locker. But the ultimate vision, the big dream, is to become an open, interoperable network. Think more like email, where different platforms can all talk to each other. And that leaves us with the final critical question. Aratai has this incredibly compelling offer, right? It's built on privacy, on local data, on national pride. But are those ideals powerful enough to break the single most dominant force in all of technology, that network effect that keeps us all locked into the apps we already use? That right there is the billion user question. 